Hey, it's Sarah Burke here from the Women in Media podcast. And before we get started on a new episode, could I get you to hit like, follow, subscribe, hit the bell, whichever app you do your podcast listening in. Make sure you're all set up so you know when there's a new episode and you can help spread the word. Oh, and if you're so inclined, could I ask you to leave a review if the app that you're using does that? You're the best. All right, let's get to the show. I'm Sarah Burke, and this is the Women in Media podcast. While many of us packed and emptied our coolers for the May long weekend, a Toronto television and radio personality shared a story that would rock female broadcasters everywhere, including me. Now, some are calling her a whistleblower, some are calling her a troublemaker, a problem, but some of us are calling Jen Valentine brave. She had the courage to tell a story that is prevalent yet hidden in newsrooms and studios across this country. The story of a woman being threatened, silenced, and diminished. But she also told the story of a woman who decided it was more important to tell the story than quietly walk away like so many do, like so many hope that we will. Many women who go through something like this completely leave the industry altogether. In reflecting on my own recent experience in this industry, and of course, inspired by Jen Valentine, I arrived at this. We love our jobs, but what you heard Jen Valentine describe is also often a part of the job. Why do we let this pattern continue? The quieter you stay, the more successful you will be. This triggered me, and I'm confident it has triggered so many of my colleagues. The abusers are problematic, don't get me wrong. Even worse, though, are the people who are aware and enabling the behavior pretending things will just take care of themselves. And spoiler alert, they don't. I really hate how sometimes women in this business are confronted with the choice of mental health or opportunity. We deserve both of those things. I'm going to say that again. We deserve both our mental health and opportunity. So I just wanted to start this episode with a big thank you and big love to Jennifer Valentine. I was actually pretty uneasy about how to approach this discussion on my podcast. Yes, of course, I invited Jen Valentine on, and I do hope to speak with her for a future episode. Fortunately, though, I had booked some time with two veteran broadcasters who are about to launch their own project while reflecting on some of their own experiences in this industry. As a matter of fact, their experiences in this industry sort of led them to this project. A new podcast called The Women of Ill Repute. You know, I think of all these these hilarious women uh, like Dorothy Parker or Tallulah Bankhead or Mae West who, uh, who were all, you know, either unapologetically sexy or funny or, you know, alcoholics <laughs> or all three. It's a Lucille Ball quote, right? Because she used to say, yes. well, I'm not funny. What I am is brave. And that's, I think what has driven Maureen and and I. Uh, Cher is still alive. Another great quote, when she was first starting out, her mother said, oh, Cher, you should go and marry a rich man. And Cher said, mom, I'm going to be a rich man. (laughs) (laughs) My guests today are Maureen Holloway and Wendy Mesley. Welcome to the Women in Media podcast. How are you guys? Hey, Sarah. Good, thank you. Funny how that just rolls off the tongue, eh? I started the Women in Media podcast with a, how are you guys? (laughs) Oh, well, is that wrong? Well, I don't know. We're all guys, aren't we? You, no, but you know that. You know what I don't like is ladies. Hey, ladies, <laughs> um, it's not like men don't go around saying gentlemen. I mean, they do, but ladies seems Some to be the default. Whereas, if so, if you're addressing a group of women, it's like, women sounds odd. Hello, women. Everything sounds odd. <laughs> Yeah, well, I like to call everybody kids, including, you know, old people, old but people. apparently that's offensive too. So I think you just got to uh, have an open heart and open <laughs> ears and, you know, we'll all we'll all do our best. So listen, I'm glad that we're starting with a bit of a, a laugh because it has been quite a heavy few weeks uh, for women in broadcasting. How, how are you guys doing with that? Well, well, it's mostly in radio. Over to you, Mo. Thank you. <laughs> I've been, uh, yeah, it's been crazy. This all broke and uh, a week before my son uh, was to be married. And so I've, I'm running around getting a pedicure and fielding phone calls from from uh, various media outlets, CBC, Toronto Star. So it was very bizarre. And reliving uh, something that I actually experienced about six or seven years ago. Um, 
I'll, I'll be specific. We're talking about the abuse that took place in the studio at Q107 uh, through the hands of John Derringer and the management that supported him. I want to make sure that that gets across. But mm -hmm. it was kind of also a, 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 a ding dong, the witch is dead kind of feeling. It was somewhat exhilarating to to finally be heard. And I mean, all credit to Jennifer Valentine, who went came forward with a video that ripped the uh, the lid off everything. So to answer your question, yes, it's been tumultuous, but I think it's been good. I think that uh, letting a little sunshine into this is, can only do good. And Absolutely. Um, hopefully we're moving in the right direction. Wendy, what were your thoughts when you saw the Jennifer Valentine video? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I'm a good friend of Maureen's, obviously, and so I knew about what had happened with her at Q107, so I wasn't at all surprised. And I, we actually had a conversation about it yesterday. I think that, I think she handled it really well in terms yeah. of, yeah, there were these problems. I'm going to be open about them. Let's all be open. Um, but at some point, you got to, you know, let the, let the process carry on. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I was... It brought back memories when I when I was starting out. It was and I we both started at CKFM. Well, I sort of started at Chum actually, but uh, back in those days, a thousand years ago, the word was women's voices aren't authoritative enough. So women were eventually allowed to be on the air, like Maureen was, but but only if they were with a male co-host who could be mean to them. And so I just <laughs> I don't know. I think uh, specifically we've come a long way. Not. <laughs> yeah, I certainly grew up with that narrative, you know, th thinking at least it would never be two women back to back. A woman like anchoring, you know, a radio show was kind of unheard of and all of that. So I think, you know, looking at all three of us in this virtual room, I, I'm, I feel very proud about myself and about what you two have, have accomplished over the years. I was just going to say that was one of the things when when we decided to get together and, and make this podcast was that, you know, I, I've never necessarily felt that it has to be a woman thing. And and if you know right. what I mean, like uh, I am a feminist, a staunch one and all the for all the right reasons, I think. Um, but I tend to shy away from women projects that are aimed at women. Um, but this, Wendy came to me with this idea and it isn't, it's a, it's, it's, we're, we're talking to women about womanly things. <laughs> whatever that but is. It's, Menstruation, whatever that is. yes. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but it's meant for everybody. And I think we really want to stress that. You know, I'm even thinking about having a male on this podcast right now, and perhaps a former uh, male in management at Course Entertainment oh would be interesting. Oh my. Well, that would be interesting. So, opening the door and like let's let's get it out there. Let's talk about it because you know we've done a lot of pushing it to the back. Well, we're called women of ill repute, which is really not about you know some horrible thing that somebody did at some point. It, it's about, I guess, the realization that nearly all women who have fought for something, which is like everybody, uh, like every man, um, is a woman of ill repute. Like there are so many, they're, they're, they're just people who have sort of rejected the roles that are handed to them and saying, I'm going to carve my own path. I'm going to do my own thing. And I might make mistakes or uh, I might even hurt someone without meaning to because now I'm out of the, I'm not on Marketplace anymore. So I'm not chasing down people trying to say, you did this terrible thing and you have to pay <laughs> penance. Uh, I'm not into that anymore. But I guess Maureen and I, we sort of have a, uh, Maureen thinks that we are the women of ill repute and we can interview whoever we want. I'm exaggerating. Um, and I think it's, it, it is more women, but but it is restricting. It is because there's lots of people that we want to talk to who have fought for things and have changed the world and who sort of reject the traditional roles that um, that were laid out for them. And they would be really interesting to talk to. But for our first batch, we've sort yeah. of gone to uh, women who not that have done bad things, but the women who have questioned things, who have carved out a path, who have maybe pissed off a couple of people, but are still seen by most as admirable. Right, right. So we got, we got to go kind of back to the beginning of how you two even came together. So you've, been, you've been friends for a very long time uh, in not the industry. Not that long. No? Not that long. About no. six, seven years, I think. We're dear friends. We probably spend more time together now than with anybody else. But <laughs> right. yeah, we haven't uh, been long-term friends. Where did you guys first meet? Where did you like first like spot each other in a room? <laughs> well, Maureen says that 
that she made some kind of faux pas and thought I was somebody else years ago. And I sort of remember that, <laughs> but, but we, we, she can confess in a moment, but um, we met through John Moore. So John Moore, I used to do a panel on Sundays and John Moore was on it. And he and Maureen are really good friends. And he says, you're so much like Maureen, you have to meet Maureen. And so we had this dinner and Maureen and I, well, I, I, she can speak for herself, but I fell in love. I just was like, and then it turned out we're kind of twins. Yeah. And so, yeah. But the incident that Wendy's um, mentioning, it was Jane Houghton, who was a legendary broadcaster. She's now Justice of the Peace and she's right now in France in her house. So her, her life is going well. But she used to have these parties, best broads luncheons and they would be filled with basically every woman in broadcasting, radio and television, and you knew who everybody was. And I found myself talking to this this lovely petite blonde that I was convinced was Sue Scambatti, who was a courtroom <laughs> reporter, I think, for City at the time. Of course, Wendy's It was fast. me. It was Wendy. And I'm just going on about, you know, I just love your work, and it must be. And a lot of the things that I said I thought I was saying to Sue were appropriate. Like, it's such a tough business, and you got, you know, got to got to get in there and jostle with the guys and... And then, then I suddenly realized that she wasn't Sue, and she just went, well, nice <laughs> talking to you, and walked away. <laughs> <laughs> you let it roll off your shoulder, obviously. Well, when yeah, you... just like, oh, my God. Oh, so stupid. So here we are years later, and, and I'm Funny. working with Sue Scambetti, and I couldn't be happier. <laughs> so, so how did this first conversation about working together on a podcast come up? Well, after uh, after I left CBC, I was thinking of doing a book or doing a podcast or whatever. And then I basically just ended up windsurfing because there wasn't enough money or enough. Nothing was like easy and nothing was falling from the sky. And then two things happened was uh, one, my husband came up with the idea of the woman of the women in ill repute because he, he knows me and he knows the kinds of things I want to talk about. And he thought that. Um, uh, that it would be fun for me, but I, w I thought of doing it by myself. And then uh, Maureen came through around Christmas time. And I was like, and, and she was had recently left the morning show. And I was thinking it would be so great to do with this with Maureen because she's funny. She's a broadcaster. She knows how to do stuff. We enjoy each other's company. And so who cares if we never make any money? We're hoping to make gobs and gobs of money, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but even if we don't make any money, it would be fun. And we could talk to people. And so, you know, it's not... It, it hasn't been easy because Maureen's a comedian and I'm a very serious journalist with capital V and capital S and capital J, but, uh, I have no, cap I figure... have no capitals. <laughs> capital C. I can almost see exactly why you guys are such a good fit though. And that is what I thought. And, and I feel like I have parts of me that are you, Wendy, like I'm traditionally trained as like a, a broadcast journalist. And then, you know, I ended up in radio cause it was super fun and I, I, I love that side of things too. How did it feel like starting to plan the podcast? This is quite different from your former professional roles. Okay, well. Uh, there was too much wine involved. Yes. <laughs> so Wendy, and, and I say this with great affection, comes from a place where, you know, every show has a staff of thousands. Um, right. And I'm barely exaggerating. So her <clears> idea <throat> was that we were going to talk to Jane Fonda and Cher and Dolly Parton <laughs> and all that. And I was like, uh-huh. Um, you know, and that we somehow have chase producers and that everybody would want to do this and do it for us and do it for free. And, and I am exaggerating, but, and I was like, oh, okay. And of course the truth <laughs> is so far from that. And it was, it's been such a journey finding someone who can give us technical, uh, uh assistance, chasing down the guests that we wanted. And that's a whole story. I could, we could spend the next hour giving you stories about chasing I know all about it. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of podcast people will tell you this is the hardest thing. It's finding the right guests. And, yes. uh, and and Wendy is so good at it. She's a terrier. She says, we're going to get so-and-so, and she doesn't care. She writes letters. She calls everybody she knows. She pesters people. And I'm <laughs> like, well, if you don't like me, then to hell with you <laughs> right yeah no it's really funny because maureen says why do you care what other people think and then she really cares I do care. like yeah so it's uh yeah it's i'm so used to, as a as a journalist you're usually interested in talking to people who have you know done something bad or you want to ask them a hard question because they're in government and they're responsible for for things and and so I wasn't really ever afraid. I mean, I was at the beginning. You're afraid of everything. I was afraid of the microphone at the beginning. Um, but You've come a long way. Yeah, <laughs> but you it. learn that stuff. And so I was used to being turned down. And I was used to, you know, you try 10 people and you get one. Or you try seven times and then finally someone gives in and says, okay, 
I'll do this because it's in my interest because I'm, you know, minister of whatever or I'm this person who wants to save my business. Um, whereas Maureen was used to talking to people who were like, I have a story to tell. I'm interesting. I got something. to." So it's been and then just getting to those people like if you don't know famous person's best friend, just try. Right. Well, you know, it's 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 hard and we don't have yeah. people. It's it's me and Maureen. We do all the research. We have all the ideas, uh, good or bad ones. And uh, it's been a it's been a lot of work. So is there a poster child for this podcast? Is there like the ideal guest, someone you guys had in mind, maybe someone that you both admired growing up? You know, I think of all these these hilarious women like Dorothy Parker or Tallulah Bankhead or Mae West, who uh, who, who were all, you know, either um, unapologetically sexy or funny or, you know, alcoholics <laughs> or all three. <laughs> but I think there were a lot of great dames and a lot of great broads that I would would have loved to have talked to because they're funny and brave and funny and brave often go hand in hand. So I would probably say some one of those legendary ladies from the past. Uh, funny and brave. Yeah, it's like that's what Maureen and I argue all the time about. It's a Lucille Ball quote, right? Because she used to say, yes. and she was an inspiration to both of us. She used to say, she said now, that what, I'm not funny. What I am is brave. And that's, I think, I think that's what drives so, that's what has driven Maureen and, and I. And it's what's driven so many people who are on the podcast. But other people that we'd love, 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 love to have, like, uh, Cher is still alive. I haven't given up on her. I'm hoping that when we become rich and famous, that we're going to be <laughs> someday in this podcast, we're going to go to uh, Cher because another great quote is of her when her when she was first starting out, her mother said, oh, Cher, you should go and marry a rich man. And Cher said, mom, I'm going to be a rich man, <laughs> which, uh, which is another little chip on the shoulder that I've been carrying around for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> the one like common thread here that I'm hearing, especially in some of the women's names that you just um, mentioned, it's almost like I, I don't want to use the word like outcast, but it's like, you know, the otherness. Would you say that that sort of led you there? Very much so. We have this phenomenal lineup of uh, amazing women and uh, and we'd like to share that guest list with you. Uh, yes. So we have everyone from Mary Walsh to Jody Wilson-Raybould, former Minister oh. of Justice, to Jan Arden, of course, to Marilyn Dennis, to Jen Ag, who owns a bunch of restaurants in Toronto, to Molly Johnson. I'm leaving people out, Wendy. We've got 10. Uh, Marie, Marie Hannon. Marie Hannon, She's the, the yeah, lawyer. Yeah, defended Gian Gomeshi. Oh, yeah. Uh, very, very interesting to hear her point of view. And there's now just something moving about something that we talked about with her about changing the justice system so judges won't perhaps handle things the way that they uh, handle things in that case. Jax Irwin, um, who's a fantastic uh, broadcaster uh, on Virgin. And please forgive me if I'm, I'm forgetting people. But so uh, to respond to your question... When we go after people, they can't just be famous or they just can't be accomplished. They have to have something of the outlier about them. Outlier. Right? So yes. that has really helped us. I mean, there are a lot of other people that we've approached that for various reasons are not on the show. And hopefully we'll scoop them all up the second uh, with our second batch. But and, and what I'm trying to say is that there's, there's some really lovely women out there that we're not going to talk to because they don't fit the bill of an outlier that they've done things well but done it conventionally we just did leah mclaren there we got go. a book coming out in yeah. in july um and she's i don't know she was uh one of those women in media who started writing about she was sort of like canada's carrie bradshaw she wrote about right. shaving her legs i made that up but <laughs> she wrote about you know trends or things that women do or whatever and people were like oh god you can't do that you know that's terrible that's not journalism harumph harumph um yeah so and now everybody writes about their toenails yeah. or whatever yeah so it's, now, now it's like cool and hip yeah <laughs> exactly do all that there's obviously things in common with the podcast that you you guys will do and, and my podcast and I've actually had some of those guests on myself but one thing that I think you guys will love exploring with all these guests is sort of how um through the otherness they end up facing comes this other side which is maybe confidence and you know finding like a a new light and you certainly both have have been through that can you maybe both give me a moment in your career where you first experienced that otherness or that outlier and um, mm -hmm. how you sort of powered through. Let me go, let me go, let me go. <laughs> yeah, no, it, I mean, it goes back to the whole thing that I was talking about at Chum a thousand years ago when I was in high school. I started my first part-time job was there and, and 
it, it went from women's voices are not authoritative, so we can't ever have them read the news. There were a couple of exceptions, like Barbara Frommer was my hero growing up, uh, along with Lucille Ball. Um, the three of them, my mom, Lucille Ball, and Barbara Frommer, my mom is only, only one of them knew about it. Um, but I went from there, uh, eventually, to being in Quebec City, where nobody else wanted the job, and so I managed to get in, even though I had no experience and barely spoke French at the beginning, to then being on Parliament Hill. And, wow. And back then, there were no women in, the, well, there were women in the Bureau, but not that had any power. Um, so, the, like, there were pictures of naked women all over the office. The guys would talk about going out with the skirts for lunch. And it was just like, ha, 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 ha. And I was like, hey, I'm not freaking wearing a skirt because I was wearing the ugliest shoes and padded shoulders you could imagine so no one could tell I was wearing a skirt. Um, but but things have things have changed. Like, I think... You know, it sort of went from one of the, we ended up talking to Marilyn Dennis because it's so interesting that she is now the older woman with the younger male partners and it used to be the other way around. So yes. like, I think a lot of a lot of positive things have happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, anyway, that's I'm sure Maureen has, as in the John well, Derringer story, well, <laughs> has a lot more interesting stories to tell. But uh, but not necessarily negative ones. The thing with my trajectory or my career is never it's not been a an ascent a gradual ascent it's been sort of waves of crashing and burning <laughs> and then rolling and then crashing and burning and such is yeah. the medium right um but if there was anything it was a lot i was i think i was a traffic reporter and it's funny the program director at the time wasn't necessarily enlightened but i heard that he said to the morning man at the time we're talking like 30 years ago she's funny we should hear more from her <laughs> and that was just a small little thing, but it made all the difference. It's like, yeah, you know what? Let's just use her beyond the traffic. And I think that's what really got the ball rolling. And then, you know, being asked to, I mean, I, I did a, a, a syndicated feature with all the top morning shows across the country for a number of years and ratings spiked across the board. And then I started getting competitive offers from other companies. And, and I, it, was, it was a career I fell into. I wanted to be a journalist, okay? Okay. <laughs> so this yeah, was, but you are. Yeah, now I am. Kind of it was a sort of weird <laughs> feeling that, hey, it's like people are, I'm as surprised as anybody that I can do this and do it so effortless, seemingly effortlessly. And it just continued right up until my last gig, which was hosting the morning show of a legendary station. And they didn't renew my contract. And now here I am. And now here you are. <laughs> <laughs> Crash and burn, so baby. It's almost like that the the traffic conversation was the seed that was planted, like where you first believe in yourself and mm -hmm. where you first think, I am funny and I should be doing more than this and I have other things to contribute. I wanted to be a serious journalist and I decided in grade 13, which existed in those days, that I was going to go and study journalism at Ryerson and, that's, and Maureen went there too. Yeah. But I was working at uh, CKFM, which is associated with CFRB in Toronto, and one morning they asked me to fill in and this very serious journalist, I was heading down to the studio studio and the microphone was there and I was absolutely terrified and the bells were going on the wire machines which existed in those days and it was like oh well, I I'm, I'm too busy I can't pay attention it's just too much it's too much and the, the bells they might mean something I'll deal with it later and it was basically Three Mile Island which was a nuclear plant that had, had imploded and it was like the biggest story for the next decade and I missed it so yeah I think we we all uh, <laughs> there's journalism and then there's journalism <laughs> <laughs> but that right there too too is like you know when you're no one can perform at their best when they're overwhelmed and that's why you know a lot of what needs to happen in broadcasting is creating an environment where women are, are comfortable or more so are than comfortable, they have though. been you know I, I, don't, I don't mean to interrupt but I mean referring back to this the 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 derringer debacle for lack of a better word right uh the there he he's a bully so men fell under his his you know I think we all three of us might know a, a gentleman who has been bullied by Derringer. I can think of several. It's not just women. It's just everyone has a right to feel comfortable where they work, no matter what they do. But yes, Sarah, absolutely women have, have borne the brunt of it. Yeah, and I got so much help and so much promotion and so much support from from a lot of, of men in the business too. So it's, you know, yeah, like, like Maureen, I'm a feminist, but that's not the only thing happening. I yeah. think, you know, human rights matter. So. For sure. So what, you know, you you guys have just led me right to this um, 
What does it take to feel supported and confident in your workplace in order to do great things? Well, it depends on the leader. Like one of the best leaders I ever had, uh, so she was sort of my partner, but she was the executive producer of a show where I did my proudest work. It was called Undercurrents, and it was a show that was on 20 years ago that talked about things like privacy and data mining and social and explosion and preoccupation with celebrities and branding. It was trying to basically bring investigative reporting to media and marketing and, and all of those stories. And the boss of that, um, who... Uh, created it with me, even though she did most of the creating, was a woman by the name of Frances Morrison. Uh, her message was, let's be brave and let's make it clear. And people don't need to be told how great they are. They need to be told, it would be so much better if we did this, which goes against all HR training, which is True. tell people, yeah, it's, it's so great. You're so wonderful. Here's your big pat on the head. Oh, and, and maybe you might want to fix this one thing. Whereas to me, um, and maybe it's the way that I was raised. I just wanted to know how I could make it better. I and, always and love that. Yeah. yeah. But that's not what people are taught these days. These days, it's like we're, there's the old joke about, you know, we give medals to all 27 children instead of to the, you know, the top three. So, yeah, I kind of get how there's a problem with the, the, the three medal system. <laughs> but I, I don't know, because I think it depends on the person. You have to, you have to make somebody feel appreciate it but you also have to give them a bit of a kick in the pants to be to be better so it's finding the right line mm. yeah i i have certainly found uh that you know after receiving some constructive criticism it doesn't it's the way it's delivered i, th yeah. I would argue that um changes how you might feel after but after constructive criticism i've done my best growth i've done my best like developing as a as a broadcaster so oh i don't take criticism well <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's different. Everyone's different. No, oh. that's, I've, I've actually, I actually take direction very well. Um, <laughs> but I, I, it's, I was just listening to you both. And uh, other than John McFadgen, who was the our original news director, he hired Wendy and he hired me, but, but several years apart. So we never, our paths did not cross, but we did have that same uh, very avuncular uh, fatherly figure. He was a news was director great. with the most, the messiest office you've seen in your life and an over spilling ashtray. And, and he was great. And he believed in Wendy. Oh my God. He believed, he believed in Wendy. He believed in me and that he was a wonderful person to start in, to have with you when you start in the business. Unfortunately, after him came a lot of and I'm, you know what? I'm going to give credit to Gary Slate as well. As difficult a man as he is, he was a, he's great with talent and he supported me as well. Um, but after that, it was more a question of being disappointed. And I'm sorry to say this, but it's true. I kind of, there were a few exceptions, but I'm, for the most part, I was like, all right, I'm going to, have to do this myself. Um, so mm -hmm. that's my response to that. There should be more mentorship. Uh, but there right now, there really isn't. Yeah, mentorship is hard to come by. And I would say that mentorship is one of the reasons I just quit my most recent job because there was none. I lost complete potential for growth and I had no mentorship. Yeah. And that sucked. Well, that's a dead end. That's a dead end. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. You're way too young and talented to accept that that's the end of the road. I mean, certainly Wendy and I are way too young and talented to yes. accept that that's the end. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not even kidding. I know it sounds, jo it sounds yeah. jokes, but... No, neither of us were ready to say what? We've got nothing more to say. We've got nothing more to share. Come on. You're just old, so just go away. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, no, I'm, I'm still thinking. I make mistakes like anybody else, but, uh, but yeah, I still have something to offer. Because I think there is this expectation that uh, it used to be that um, you had to be 70, but now it seems like people in their 50s are like, yeah, boring. Unless you're a man and things are a little bit a little bit better for a little bit longer, but not really. I mean, yeah. so yeah, it's uh, just have fun and hope yeah. that you're contributing something. I think a lot of women who have come on my podcast have sort of spoken about being like blackballed or cast aside. And with the outlier conversation we just had about, about your podcast, I think there will be some of that on your podcast as well. How do you start fresh in this new realm of podcasting? How do we make it not about those things and looking ahead instead of behind? Go. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I've actually approached this, like the things did not end well with me in CBC. I feel like I was thrown under the bus by my employer of 40 years and I made a mistake. I called, I didn't call anyone a word. I never, ever would in a million years call somebody the N word, but I used it because someone had said that they were 
that they were called that and I was outraged and in the moment I, I, I used the word and I shouldn't have and I apologized and I should have been forgiven and I wasn't and instead uh, I was basically used as a as a massive tool to cleanse the CBC of its own sins. And uh, so anyway, I don't, but that's not what this podcast is about. And I've, I've had like so many different careers over, Mm -hmm. over the years. I was a political reporter forever. I was a local reporter for forever. I was host of a show that looked at media and marketing for five years. I did marketplace for five or six years. So to me, this is just a new, interesting thing. And the only difference is, is that when Maureen's son is getting married or I'm going uh, windsurfing for two weeks, uh, that we put everything on hold because <laughs> we we have like we're the producers and we're we're in charge and um, so yeah it's like women of ill repute I think most people that we've reached out to of all ages and all backgrounds and um, have all said yeah I'm a woman of ill repute <laughs> yeah I, 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 yeah and they're they know that that's that's what we all are like the the idea of of who who is normal there is no freaking normal um mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. let's you know let's we all i i think as long as you're honest and brave and you're willing to talk about things like that's we're just we're just trying something new that is interesting to us and that we hope will have some meaning for for other people and and a few chuckles maybe i actually think that you two are gonna have a whether you know it or not yet you're gonna have a tour down we, the road. we we hope so <laughs> there are two things that i'm taking from this i mean a lot of things but two in particular one even though we haven't launched yet we're launching mid-june um god willing <laughs> but because uh, there's still so much to do and it's been such a learning curve and and you know when we first embarked on this we had no idea I mean, we've had to build a website we've had to have f- f- photographs done we've need to we we didn't we've never worked before so that we've had to figure out our own rhythm and how do we dance together and that's mm-hmm. an ongoing process and i said to wendy a couple of weeks ago i said you know like i was near tears because i was exhausted but i said you know we, we we've we're, we did it we're doing yeah. it that we've we've built this thing ourselves and I, no matter what, I'm immensely proud of both of us because, it, as you know, Sarah, it is not easy. You know, people yeah. say, oh, you can do a podcast. Anybody can do a podcast. Yeah, anybody can do a podcast. How many people can do it well? And we hope that this will be a good thing. The other mm-hmm. thing is that the women that we have met, we totally line a hand them. That's a very old-fashioned <laughs> reference. But Brian Linehan was an inter- a celebrity interviewer who used to do such incredible research and we, if they wrote a book, we read it. We did. We found everything that we could. We knew everything we could get our hands on about our guests going in, just for a half hour yeah. interview. And yeah. it was. I'm so amazed by our guests, and so impressed, and so delighted, and so entertained. And also, they have so much in common. They may not know each other, but they. This came out over the process of talking to them that they're at. These women have a lot in common. They are women of ill repute. Whatever that means, it's something to be proud of. So it's been a really good learning experience for us. Yeah, we've learned so much. Um, I, but I think that the, uh, an audience or a mainstream audience has a lot to learn too. And I'm sure you're experiencing this, Sarah, is that you know some people are like, oh, wow, you're saying that I didn't smoke? Well, you, you haven't done your research. And we're like, no, this... This, this is not this is not very serious journalism yeah. with yeah. smoke away smoke them if you got them <laughs> yeah this is this is a conversation and it yeah. and it's not like a list of questions followed by a list of answers and yeah. uh, um, but I think people have trouble uh, getting their heads around that because podcasts are still new to a lot of people and it's and it's it's the idea of having a conversation rather than a formal interview so we're still learning too like I think yeah. halfway through of recording because our things are mostly pre-recorded. Uh, for the first batch, uh, we realized, oh, we should actually let the person, like we chat, we chit chat, we just shoot the shit for the, op- for the opening. The yeah. 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 And then we thought, well, we should actually let people listen to that. It's about them. And then, yeah. you know, at the end we go, well, that well, person, yeah, that, well she was yeah. spiky. <laughs> yeah. So that's no, like, we're, we love them. We love we them. Love them. Yeah. <laughs> that's almost like, you know, a very tiny thing about podcasting, like, at the, you know, having a, a shoot the shit sort of couple moments at the beginning. Uh, but what what is something that you both have learned that's surprised you with entering this new medium? Everything. <laughs> Think um, well, just how hard it is to get people, you know, so it's yeah. easy when you, you know, like I, I knew someone who had 
uh, contributed to uh, Leah McLaren's book. So I reached out to her. That that was easy. We wanted to get uh, Jan Arden. So I know somebody from CBC who knows. It was Rick but Mercer, get... by the way. Rick Mercer betrayed Jan to us, and that's how we got her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And on my podcast, she was amazing. She is. She's amazing. Yeah. yeah. But it's just, it's hard when you don't have, uh, like, a database to say, oh, here's this person. So it's, it's, it's we're, we're learning all of that. Yeah. But that's... And then it's been dealing with all of the technical aspects. Like, thank goodness that uh, Maureen does the Squadcast re- recording. Um, but it's the domain, it's the website, it's the photos, it's the blurb, it's the bios, it's the, there's just, Suddenly you're on top of all the research and the meaning, yeah. the great meaning of it all. <laughs> mm-hmm. I would say what surprised us is that the people that we, sometimes uh, we would end up talking to them even on the phone or having correspondence, and some of the guests that we thought were going to be easy peasy, uh, to the point of maybe even being boring, turned out to be snarly messes. You'll, you'll know which ones. And, uh, <laughs> and then the ones that we were afraid of, like Marie Hannon, who's incredibly impressive. I'm not saying she's a sweetheart. That's a belittling thing, but was so much warmer and and uh, down to earth than you'd expect. So it's it's pretty interesting to, to actually sit mm-hmm. down with these people. I would say yeah. probably half the time we didn't get what we expected. And and I'm hearing something, at least in, in Wendy, what you were sort of getting at too, like not having the database at the beginning. Um, one of my biggest fears of leaving SiriusXM was the not being attached to that SiriusXM brand. And could I do that myself? And once you start doing, you realize you do have the skills and you, you know, those people and your name hold up on their own. So, you know, when someone gets a request from Maureen Hallway or Wendy Mesley. But it's finding the email that's <laughs> tricky. It's, yeah, it's tricky yeah. getting getting direct access to that person. Once you've got that, then yeah, the and you know that they've they've read or seen or heard your your approach so yeah, yeah. but don't don't okay. don't don't kid yourself we've been turned down and of course and Wendy's like that's show business and I'm like why don't they like us <laughs> yeah like we really wanted to and we are going to interview Sarah Polly um but you know she ended up doing Hannah Sung uh who is a really good friend of hers and launched uh actually she'd be great on our podcast Hannah Sung um and she she launched um media girlfriends and she's now got a podcast and so sarah was like i'm really sorry but can i do you guys later when i'm doing something else and we're like yeah okay <laughs> right. Why are you talking to i've had a lot of that too <laughs> yeah she's my best friend maybe that's why maybe. <laughs> but, uh, funny enough i thought friend, it would be a lot harder to you know to track you two down i do a nomination segment sort of at the end of this podcast usually where I ask women to nominate, you know, women they admire that might have some great stories to share on a podcast like this. And we are going to do that um, shortly here. But, you know, Maureen, it was um, Mel, Melanie Mariani that mentioned your name and she mentioned how much she admired working alongside you at Chorus. You both have touched on moments you were very proud of in your career, but I'm wondering if you could pinpoint a moment or it may, it may be a phase. It it might not be a moment. Um, that was the most challenging for you and why? And it, it could even be the out. Well, mine's easy. Um, it was elections. You okay. know, it, it took me back to being when I was 18 and racing down to the studio and being absolutely terrified that I had no clue what I was doing. Because for election night, I, there was always be a, like a group of, I don't know, six to 10 people who would be in charge of doing the the, the on-air presentation part of the and you never know like you have we would run through a million examples in our dry runs of you know if so-and-so wins if so-and-so but you never know so I had to memorize like 150 writings with times three or four or five candidates in each one and then boil it down to the 45 seconds that you have and I would do that in rehearsal and then uh, Peter Mansbridge, who was like the big host of most of these things, uh, he would like steal my best lines and I'd be like, hey, you just stole my line. And he'd like, yeah, well, I've used in rehearsal. I'm like, <laughs> fine I'm now. Like, OK, <laughs> OK, well, I'll yeah, I'll I'll learn that. But I would I would just uh, I would get I wouldn't sleep the night before. I would just I I I'd procrastinate and then thinking, no, I've got to get my shit together. Um, but, but it was always it was so it was so hard. I don't know. I, some things I just think that people take too seriously. I should have just. So I know my. I know my crap. <laughs> she, up, but Wendy, I never did. Wendy Mesley <laughs> knows her crap. It's our next podcast. Um, With seven viewers. <laughs> you might. Our listeners. Sorry. You might. You've listeners. You might think that uh, that that whole episode of Q one hundred and seven was probably the most challenging, and it certainly was. 
but not the most challenging. I actually, I haven't spoken publicly about this, but my last year at Rogers was brutal. Um, really? We had a great show. We were number one and uh, with a difficult co- uh, co-host. And uh, he upped and disappeared, just left with no explanation, left the country, sold his house, didn't leave the country, but moved away. And uh, I mean, he was never a, an easy person to work with, but nonetheless, we, the rest of us were left completely uh, bewildered. And uh, oh. at first, management seemed to be ready to build a new show around me. And, and then they stopped talking to me. And they brought in Mike Cooper as a fill-in host. And all of a sudden, this lovely, this little group, five people, we, all of a sudden, we were making the best radio ever with no direction. No direction. There was Christine, I'm going to name them, Christine Cardoso, okay. Ian MacArthur, Gord Rennie, uh, Mike Cooper, and me. And I was running the show. For the first time in my life, I was running a show. Completely and utterly responsible. And it was wonderful. We we were so supportive because we were we were uh, we were abandoned children. Nobody was looking in on us, and then uh, they did not re- they fired everybody except for Christine and um, and did not renew our contracts. Mine, and that was that. And it was heartbreaking and shocking too. And yet I look back on that and I'm so grateful I had that opportunity. Of course, yeah. I still call her at three thirty in the morning. And say, hey, Maureen, did you miss your old show? Shut you up, get up now. <laughs> right, but you know, at least out of it, even though obviously there's some pain there, at least out of it, you could say that you were having the best time you had, had ever had, and life. feeling and feeling the most empowered by the sounds yeah. of it than you ever had because you were calling the shots. Yeah, and I was grateful for the opportunity, even though they chose not to to renew it. Mm- Right, yeah. right. And now you've got two control freaks because I, um, so, so Maureen, even when she wasn't in charge, was pretty much in charge. Um, and uh, for the last 20 years of, of my life, after being a sort of a general assignment reporter, even on the Hill or in the Quebec legislature or whatever, um, I was sort of a reporter. And then I became a host and I got, they sort of like built stuff around me. And so I was able to mostly uh, or largely choose, um, who I got to work with and what the show was about and all that stuff. And now I'm like working with this other control freak <laughs> named Marie Holloway. Um, and we have to like agree on things yeah. or at least agree to disagree on things. And uh, it's been, it's been, um, it's been difficult, but it's also been really good, I think. And we're I, like, we love each other. So it's, you know, it all basically comes down to we'll work this out mm-hmm. as painful as it may be. <laughs> and at least with you two, it's like you both come from a place where you're, you've learned from what you didn't appreciate. Yes. Well, as the Lord says, when a door shuts, a window opens. That's from the sound of music, by the way, not the Bible. <laughs> I mean, I've been completely stumped on how to how to publish, you know, my my next episode um, of this podcast with the Jen Valentine stuff. You can't host a women in media podcast and not reference it and not go there. But, you know, my my own experience is pretty fresh and I'm still finding the words and and all of that. So I think in the spirit of how I want to sort of end this podcast. And also I think part of what you two are trying to accomplish in your new, in your new venture, how can we um, open those doors a little more and continue this type of conversation? I think we should all have each other on our po- each other's podcasts. I mean, yeah. uh, that's really important. <laughs> so I guess Sarah, we'd like to have you on our on our <laughs> next round. But I, I think yeah, mu- mutual support is so important. I mean, even though I've like never, ever met either of you, have never spoken to either of you, it doesn't feel like we're strangers. That's no, it all. Feels, it feels like a good place, doesn't it? And yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's amazing, the, 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 not only the empowerment. I mean, Jen is trying to plan a barbecue <laughs> with all the <laughs> women who have come forward. And it's not just the ones that you've, you've heard from on social right. media. There are a number of people who uh, have been very supportive from the sidelines and other women who can't come forward because it, they do reasonably believe it'll jeopardize their their jobs but Jen wants to have a barbecue and right because you know what it's been fun too it's been incredibly warm and cathartic to share stories with women that you've only known in passing and mm-hmm. uh, maybe that's what we're doing with women in media this podcast and women of ill repute is that we're having conversations that are not just uplifting but hilarious and hopefully <laughs> yeah. entertaining and worthy yeah. of sponsorship 
Yeah, Maureen and I, we are, it's basically a two-man band where we hire other people to help us out as, as required, but it's basically just the two of us. But before that, I was always part of a team, and I think that's really important, and I think probably at least 95% of the people that I worked with um, think that I taught them something, and and I think that that's, that always mattered to me, that I I always wanted to, sh- to share experiences and to share information and to share, um, well, advice. It sounds like such a corny word, but I mean, I've been in this business for a long time, so I think I've, you know, I've obviously made some mistakes, but I, but I think I have a lot to share too. So I think, I think that's really important. And that's, that would be the advice that I would offer to young people is that it's not about the money. It's not about the fame. It's, 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 first of all, if you're a journalist, it's about the story. Tell people something that they don't know, first of all. Uh, if you're, you know, a very serious journalist, um, but but also it's about working with people that you admire or that you think that you can learn from or that you think can inspire you, um, and that's mostly what it's that's mostly what it's about. And I think we may not be doing that now, Maureen, but I'm but I'm hoping that in our conversations that with with other people that will you know that people will be able to share and and think. So that's what we're hoping. Mm-hmm. Maureen, and, and speaking of sharing. When do you really want share? <laughs> so yeah, anyway, she's now. It's, you know, it just she's keeps calling. keeps popping up. It's obviously a Freudian thing. We're gonna get her. <laughs> so if anyone has a contact for share, hook it up, please. <laughs> Maureen, we might as well as I mean, I would love to hear your advice for for someone entering this business as well at this point. Well, uh, you know, I would not recommend radio to anybody, male or female. Mm. I just wouldn't. Uh, I love radio. I feel like I've ridden the wave and uh, I think people will always want to hear from other people, but I think in this business model is no longer working. uh, And I think podcasts are the way to go. So I would push somebody who wanted to get into that in this direction, the, what we're doing here. Um, Mm -hmm. So that would be my first advice is don't, don't go there. (laughs) Don't do it. (laughs) Uh, But secondly, to, you got to be tough and you've got, but you've got to be kind and you have to be thick skinned, but you have to be empathetic. You have to be all things. And mm-hmm. uh, if you're prepared to do that and it's not glamorous and it's not glorious, but at the end of the day, if you can make a living connecting with other people, there's nothing better. I hear that so hard. So the, the last part of this podcast is uh, nominating some women to come on who you admire. So who we got? Well, it's funny. When we started this podcast, I started, uh, there's a few that I, I guess a podcast is like inviting people into your life, right? So yeah. it's like, where do you find the time? Like I have friends and I have a life and I have family. So where, where do you find the time? Uh and, and, and who do you share that time with? And there aren't that many Canadian examples uh, like us, where we're sort of journalism and we're sort of comedy. Maybe it's because we're too weird, like the, the comedian and the journalist. Maybe that's an odd mix, but we think it works. Um, but but yeah, so I, I, I listened to a couple of, of Hannah Sung's interviews. So I don't know if you're talking to her, but... Uh, I have not. But... It's sort of like she, she, we interview people who we're not friends with, who we've never met before. Some of them we have and some of them we haven't. Hers are mostly, she's talking to friends. Um, but yeah, I think it's, I, I think that her conversations are, are interesting. So yeah, I would, uh, hey. and Sarah Polly. Um, tell her to call us, to please. Hannah, son, instead of us. <laughs> have her on and tell <laughs> her she's to call us. Talk to us. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I, I sort of think we, we probably have to just get over this now. I think we're going to have a lot of shared guests, which is because the people we want to talk to share a lot of things that we admire. Yeah. Clearly, you got to have Jen. She's the whistleblower. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's mm-hmm. a lot of fun and she's full of joy and happiness. So, uh, yeah, I, I think Jen Valentine is a must, is a must. The other person that we'd really like to talk to who we haven't reached out to yet, and it's complicated because... Uh, the person is is non-binary. It's Bilal Bey who oh, does this show, sort of, and and they are so great, and the show is so great. So I would love to have them, and I would love to talk to Jamie Lee Curtis, who is American and a superstar and whatever. But but they're they're similar, I think, because they're both fighting for things. One is like, here's me, old and fat, which is fine and funny, and the other person is. Here's 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 me on my show, sort of, and I'm the most normal person on the show. Compared to and, everybody else, yeah, yeah. Have you seen, yeah, it? Have you seen yeah. the show? And yeah. it's, 
it's about optimism and bravery and yeah and aren't we all normal so yeah i would love to speak to those people the only okay. problem that we would have and i speak this quite naturally by the way sort of has been shooting on my street and taking up my parking and i feel that they owe us um, so hand over Bilal, <laughs> but you know, again, we have to be respectful of this non-binary situation and yeah, you're called women, in, woman. yeah, w- yeah, women in media, we're called women of ill repute. Bilal, I don't believe, uh, identifies as a woman. I'm not sure. Um, mm-hmm. so we have to, we have to deal with that honestly, um, right. and respectfully. So mm-hmm. there's and, that. And there's a few guests that I've, I've gone after that are non-binary as well. And, and it's just, again, about being open. And I think yeah. that the, the guests who are comfortable being open about those conversations too, everyone has something to learn from yeah. those conversations. So if you can get Bilal again, get them to call us. This is, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've tried like we've tried uh, everything. skulking on the street, but yeah. it's not worked. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, like both of you, I, I've, you know, I've watched your careers, my entire broadcasting career, and um, it, it has been a pleasure speaking to you both. And thank you. You guys were not as difficult as I thought it would <laughs> be. So no, no. I mean to get access to. Come oh on. yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, oh, no, we're easy. For sure. <laughs> Women of ill <laughs> repute. We can, and then we're going to be rich and famous. Yeah. And then, yeah, then we won't talk to anybody. Anybody <laughs> can get in touch with us. You just go to our website, womenofillrepute.com. That's where you'll find our podcast. Or you'll find them everywhere and you can contact us and we will get back to you because we have very few followers right now (laughs) we will make sure that we've got the full rundown in the episode notes and and links and all of that um if you would like to know more about maureen or wendy thank you so much thank you sarah good luck with everything wendy mesley and maureen holloway the women of ill repute watch for their new podcast launching this month and as i mentioned at the beginning of this episode if all goes according to plan My next guest is actually a man. The idea here is not to point fingers and tear this man down. The idea here is to ask some hard questions and have a discussion about how we can make this industry a better place. You'll also notice I'll be sharing some episodes from the archive as it is Pride Month, and I want to highlight some of my former guests, including radio host Jax Irwin, who was also mentioned on this episode, Shannon Burns, publicist Aaron Carroll, and musician and all-around fabulous human Isque. You can find more information about all my former guests at womeninmedia.ca. There's also a section where you can send me a note if you have a suggestion for a guest. Oh, and like my consultant told me to say, please like or subscribe to this podcast on your favorite service. Thank you. I'm Jeff Woods, and I'm shining a light on music and the rock stars who make it. He just was one of those people. He, he stood out. He was a magic guy. He really was a magic guy. Had all, we all have force. He had the same amount of force as we all had. This was before Led Zeppelin. Robert was full on. I mean, he was Led Zeppelin without the band behind him. He had the hair, the jeans, the whole thing, you know? And he was amazing. The Records and Rockstars podcast, heard around the world, and yours to hear wherever you get podcasts. All the episodes from jeffwoodsradio.com. Another Sound Off Media Company podcast.